What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode I'm going to be giving you a quick walkthrough and demonstration of a design system that I built out for my company inside of Figma. Design systems are all the rage nowadays and for good reason. They're supposed to help you get products to market faster, be a more efficient designer, and make your designs more consistent at scale. There's lots of different ways you can set up your design system so I'm not saying that this is the end all be all, this is just the way that we've done it and it's helped our productivity quite a bit. So I want to give you a quick look at it, let's check it out. All right, let's jump right in. I have Figma open and I'm gonna to navigate to my design system uh, project. And we have two design systems. We have one for the website and we have another one for the actual application. So I'm gonna open up the application design system and just walk you through a little bit of the organization and the structure. I also have a project open here on like a blank canvas so I can show you how it's organized in the assets panel. So let's do that right now. First thing you'll notice is I pulled a lot of influence from other design system inspirations. One of them being Meng Tu from Design and Code. Followed a lot of his guidelines to set up my Figma design system and it's been really, really helpful. One of those things is every single one of these pages represents a large section or large area of the design system and each one has just an organizational top bar just so you can see it at a glance. This doesn't show up in the design system, it's just visual and organizational, that's it. But inside each one of those, you can see we have different artboards in our layers panel, and you can see those represented here on screen. Um, those artboards then represent smaller buckets uh, or areas inside the design system. So you see I have avatars and backgrounds. If I go over to a project and jump into, let's just close a bunch of these up, we have assets here, that's the same page that we were on in the design system, we have backgrounds and avatars. And if I twirled avatars open, you can see the different avatars that are available to us. Um, and so that's all happening here um, inside this kind of organizational structure. So it's like page, artboard, components, and you can see those artboards are literally just butted up against that top header thing so that it all looks like one page, so to speak, but it's not. Um, okay, let's dig in a little further. You can see we have our avatar and avatar face. And if I get close, you can see it has this outline and I can turn that on and off. And it also has a huge selection of faces that are inside so I can hide and show the different you know, avatars that are there. These are all there so that I don't have to have multiple versions of avatars. I can simply come into any design project, drag an avatar in, and then I can you know, have multiple avatars um, all with different, you know, people on it. That leaves me having one component with lots of variables inside of that component. That's the way we try to work. Have as few components as possible um, and with as much variation as we can get it. That's kind of our rule of thumb. Okay. Um, next up, let's go back to our system. You can see we also have uh, some brand assets. Uh, brand assets are things like logos, app icons, so on and so forth. Um, but these are all just here and waiting. There's really not too much to say about that. We have some examples here. That is one thing to note uh, about a design system is some things that are there purely for documentation or examples. Like if I go back to my assets, you'll see that I have two versions of this avatar. Well, only one of them is an actual component and the other one is an instance of the component. And this is so when you come into the design system, you can see that there are different variations. I don't wanna to have too many examples, but I will throw a couple examples in there that are just instances so you can see the possibilities without having to dig into the layers panel. Because I spent a lot of time in this design system, I wanna make it easy for me to grok as I'm looking through things, okay? Uh, so you can see I have some pages that I have intent on building out, but they're not showing up quite yet in my design system because they don't have any components or anything inside of them. So this border radius one is empty right now. My buttons is pretty filled. I do buttons in a very specific way. First off, we have button shapes. We have an artboard just for button shapes, and this lays out the three or four shapes of buttons that we work with, which is kind of like squared off, rounded corner, kind of pill, and then this very unique button shape. Why do I do button shapes? Because down here, we have the actual buttons themselves, um, and I have different versions and variations of all those buttons. Why this is important for us is because if later on we decide as a brand to change the border radius of 
all of the buttons. I can do it up here in the button shapes and it will, like a cascading style sheet, like CSS when you're doing web development, it'll just apply across the board to every single button. I don't have to go into each type of button, right? So it's kind of this idea of having nested components, right? Uh, using this master component to build this next component, to build this next component. And then it, that just brings together your system so much more. Um, you can see we have, again, a little bit of that variation here. We have a rectangle button, but inside of it, we have different states. I have a filled state, I have a lined outline state, and I have a shadow state of it. And so we have those three states so that if you pull in a button, you can choose which version or which state of that button you would like to work with. Like maybe I really want the shadowed one instead of the normal one. You can do that because it has variation. So kind of a key thing for us, variation. Okay, cool, moving on. Uh, we have our colors obviously laid out and each of these colors uh, is mapped to an actual color style. So that way, while we're doing some design, we could put some text in here and then choose from our actual color styles. Uh, again, if those colors change later on, they change globally. You publish the styles here inside of the design system and then they show up across the board. You can review the changes and apply the changes to your project. I like that system that Figma has in place. Okay, what's next in the design system? Um, you can see we're just laying out like all the colors inside there, but uh, none of this information shows up. It's purely documentation. That's supposed to be what a, what a design system is, right? Not only master components to work off of, but examples, documentation. Later on, I would love to get this into kind of like a forward facing, uh, almost like web application where there could be code snippets, but right now this is, this is what we're working with. Icons is pretty important for us, and that's probably the last thing, you know, pretty much we'll talk about, but uh, we have lots of different icons, and we have basic icons, lined icons, we have the filled version of all of our lined icons, and then we have some special like specific icons down below, each of them filling out their own artboard. Um, and this is really, really nice in our assets to put buttons away and open up icons. I love being able to have this available to me in my side panel at any time, just drag an icon out, there it is. Do I wanna apply like a different color style to it? I can. It's a nice system to work off of. Um, so what you'll see in the design system though is I have uh, all of these gray background rows. Those are purely uh, just for visual aesthetics and organization so that I can kind of just systemize everything. I can see this is the icon, this is where they belong. It's really just an organization deal. But uh, we do keep all of our icons at a 32 by 32 pixel artboard and then we create components out of them. That way we try to get a similar stroke weight um, and look and feel to all the icons and then they're all 32 by 32. We can drag those in and everything feels similar when you drag it in. You know exactly how to scale collectively for icons. So that's a nice system, 32 by 32 icons, kind of based off of the Google or Material Design eight point grid, which is what I like to use a lot when I'm designing. So um, that's the, kind of how that works. Uh, okay, and then uh, we have typography and some overlays, but we also have UI components. These are commonly used components like status bars, nav bars, keyboards, um, cells and rows and switches and toggles. That way you don't have to go out hunting for those things constantly and you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. They're right there, they're available to you. And that is pretty much how I organize our design system. You can see in our uh, right hand column we have like all of the local styles for typography, we have all of the color styles, and I even have a few effect styles that I have saved. Uh, like on both top and bottom. And I'm gonna be filling those out even more for certain types of drop shadows so I can apply those styles right from my project. So um, you can see if I draw a rectangle like this and I make sure it's the right color, I can go to my effects and then just apply that top and bottom and we have a consistent style across the board. That's just my biggest advice is make things as consistent as possible and make it so you have to do as little work as possible in the future. Well, that's it. That's our design system. It is by no means perfect, but it's what we're working with and what we enjoy. I'd love to hear about your design systems or your thoughts on systems or your challenges in creating design systems. Let me know about those down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and walkthroughs just like this one, so maybe stick around. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and working smarter, not harder. I'll see you in the next one.